Great to be live. So I'm doing something different tonight. I'm going live on YouTube. I'm going live on Facebook. And I'm also going live on Instagram. So just give me a few minutes to get this done. Hi, guys. I'm going live, going live, going live. So I'm going live on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. So um, if you see me turning my head in different places, that's because your sis is trying to access all these platforms, okay? So, yes, yeah, so exciting. Let me know where you are tuning in from. Um, hi, Dunechi. Hi, it's Don Baby. Melanin, Melanin's Travel Magic. Let me know where you are tuning in from. Uh, um, yeah. So, I'm using this new software on uh, for YouTube and for Facebook. I really, really hope that it works so that you guys just give me a few minutes. Um, okay. So, I think we are live on YouTube. Hi, YouTube people. <laughs> How am I going to do this? So I'm live on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram. So I'm just going to be moving my head around. Okay, guys, on Instagram, I see that you guys are already popping in. Let me know where you are tuning in from. Melanin Travel Magic, you are tuning in from London. Wow, it's already like maybe midnight, like midnight or 1 a.m. Thank you, um, Dunechi from Dominica. Um, I am tuning in from, from Toronto right now. So it is 7.33 p.m. in Toronto. Hi, Dinechi from Dominica. It's nice to see you guys. All right. So um, I wanted to take some time. So first of all, I'm, I want to do a lot more lives because I think, you know, it's like it's good <laughs> to go live, you know. Um, I think it's fun. And um, my niche, the things that I love talking about are remote work, um, travel. And one thing that I'm adding to my layers in 2023 is entrepreneurship. Hi, Shaka, Mr. Dreadlocks, Mr. JD's natural. Um, so yeah, one thing that I, I'm adding into my portfolio in 2023 is entrepreneurship. And um, let me actually just move this, this here so that it can make sense. Guys, I don't know how I'm doing this, but um, <laughs> The struggles, not the struggles, but the joys of entrepreneurship, right? When you're trying to do different things, like a thousand things at the same time. But anyways, um, so yeah. So one thing that I'm trying to do in, I want to do more in 2023 is entrepreneurship, right? So this life is about businesses and entrepreneurship. So for some, for anyone who has a business, for anyone who, um, you know, is selling products or selling services, this is for you. So the reason I'm doing this, um, and I want to really like be transparent with you guys, as I always am. The reason I'm doing this is because when I started my business, be it Travel with Klim or um, the Gaska Brands, you know, I felt like I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. I had to, you know, kind of like try things and see what sticks and what doesn't. And I basically had to exper experiment on my own a lot. And as a result of that, um, you know, I made a lot of mistakes. Now, it's true that whenever you are like, whenever you are trying to start something new, it's always going to be, like you're always going to 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 have to experiment. You, you're gonna to have to make some mistakes. You're gonna to have to you know to see what works for you. But I also felt like for people, you know, like me, for people in the Caribbean or for people even like in Africa in general, um, there wasn't that many resources. So it was kind of like a gray um area, and I felt like I just had too much to figure out. Hi, Father Alistair. Anybody who is joining now, we are live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram as well, and we're talking about three key lessons that I learned in entrepreneurship, in my first year of entrepreneurship. And so I felt like, you know, I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. And in on, on, honestly, I feel like if I had like somebody to tap into, if I had somebody close, like a business mentor, somebody who could actually give me pointers, I feel like I would have made a lot more progress than what I am doing right now. But I'm also not using this as, you know, a way to say, okay, you know what, the path was like completely wrong or anything like that. I think that everything happens for a reason. And depending on how you decide to actually um, deal with your the, solu the, the, the problems or the challenges that you face, you know, you might turn them into opportunities or, you know, into, um, you know, solutions and, and teaching points for people. So when I started my business, um, two businesses, one is Travel with Claim, which is about remote work, teaching you how you can get remote work opportunities wherever you are so you can fund your dreams and also sharing travel experiences and helping you to, to organize your travel experiences. That's, that, that's the first one. And then the other one is Ngaska, the Ngaska brands, which is about the promotion of African uh, fashion clothing and um, basically accessories and, and fashion for you to elevate your everyday look 
so whether you are a man or a woman, um, when I started those two businesses, I faced different challenges. And, you know, I feel like having been in entrepreneurship for about like four years now, I know the title of the life says lessons learned in my first year of entrepreneurship, but having been in this journey for about four years now, I feel like the lessons have been compounding. And I think, you know, we don't share enough of our uh, failure stories, if I can say that, on social media. We don't share enough of our... Um, the things that didn't work out. And when you, like, if you scroll on Instagram, you scroll on Facebook, you scroll on all those platforms, you always see how I made $10,000, how I made this amount of thing. But like beyond that, behind all these success stories, there are like layers and steps of failures. And this is one of the things that I want to do a lot more this year in the journey on when, as, as I'm tapping into serving more entrepreneurs. Now you might be wondering, well, you know what, Clem, what really makes you, I mean, you're not like an expert or anything, but like, you know, I don't think that you need to be an expert to share your um what you your to share your experience, especially when you are like a few steps ahead of those who you want to impact, right? And in addition to that, I feel like I have already done like I am currently working on two businesses, and it's giving me enough um like enough background, enough perspective for me to actually be able to say, hey, you can actually learn X Y Z from this. So in this specific life, I want to share three key lessons that I learned uh, in my first year of entrepreneurship. If you are a business owner, first of all, can you drop in the comments, are you a business owner? Do you have a business or do you know somebody who's a business owner? Let me know in the in the comments. You know, I would love to know. Drop it in the comments so I can know, are you a business owner? Do you have a business or do you know somebody who is a, who is a business owner? Like, I'd love to know so I know um, how to angle the conversation. Obviously, if you are here and if you're still tuning in, that means that you are interested in the tablet. I like I would love to know. But if you are a business owner, let me know what your business is in. Like, what do you do or, you know, what field, uh, what field of business are you in? Okay. So uh, Melanin's Travel Magic. I have two businesses. Amazing. So which, what businesses do you have? Let me know. Let me know. Uh, what, what field are you in? Uh, the two businesses. I think I know one of them, but not the other one. That's Melanie Travel Magic on Instagram. I'm trying to see what the family, what the folks on Facebook are, are saying. Uh, just to let you all know, one of the lessons that I will share about is like experimenting and trying different things because whew, you all know your girl is trying this online streaming platform for the first time and it's not nothing soft, not nothing easy, <laughs> but it's fun. It looks fun. Uh, so yeah, let me know what are your businesses in. Um, for me, it's um, travel with Clem. So it's tr the field of travel and remote work. So sharing travel experiences, things that you can do at different destinations for a short period of time. Uh, remote work, how you can find remote work opportunities or freelancing opportunities so that you can actually afford or invest in your travels. So yes, uh, Melanie Travel Magic, I love that. Travel for the diaspora and social media consultancy. Yeah, social media is a huge thing and I think it's going to continue being a huge thing, you know, for a long time. So those are definitely some great niches in travel. Yeah, my kind of people, like my kind of people. All right. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. So I'm going to share with you them three um, lessons or three, yeah, three lessons that I learned in my first year of business. The first lesson is your friends are not your marketing. Okay. Your friends are not your marketing. Now I, so it's so funny because when you are as a business owner, right? Uh, when I started the first people that I sold to were my friends and surprisingly and interestingly, actually my friends bought my first products. Like when I started my African fashion and my African clothing business. And I was actually in, in Senegal. And before I started that business, I knew there was a demand because a lot of people were always telling me, you know, I want African clothes. I want African this, African that. And I just kind of like felt bad that I can just share all my clothes. So when I was in Senegal back, I think it was a few years ago, you know, I looked at different prints. I looked at different things that will sell, you know, that, that people will be interested in. And I shared it with my friends because my friends were always the one bugging me. Like, we want this, we want that, we want that. So I shared it with my friends on WhatsApp and stuff. And I shared it on my WhatsApp status. And people were like ballistic. Like, they were like, I want this, I want that, I want that. And that's how I knew that for sure that business idea that I had would actually work. Because even in just my niche group, there was a demand, right? So because of that, I then um, 
continue to market my business just on WhatsApp and to my friends as well, because they were the first buyers and the people on my contact list, they were the first people who, who bought for me. They were the first people who, who got what I had to offer, who bought and so forth. And so I, I like that high because it was giving me results. And I'm like, you know what? It's working. So let's continue on WhatsApp. But a few weeks and a few months on the line, I realized that, well, you know, they're not buying so much anymore. Like, um, you know, I'm not getting so much, much more sales from them. And that's when I realized that, like, yes, your friends can propel you, your friends can push you, your friends can be maybe your first customers, depending on what you're selling, but your friends are not the, the like, they are not the core of your marketing. And a lot of us, when we start our businesses, we always, like, we we start in a small niche, we start in a small group, we start, like, with a, with a, with a, with a group of people that we consider maybe our test and you know our test subject or test market and stuff but instead of expanding that test that test market we actually stick to it because we feel like well it's working so let me just keep selling to these people but the truth of the matter is even if if you, your first group of sell, of friends bought from you, right? Nothing tells you that they're going to always have money to be able to buy from you. Nothing tells you that they're always going to be interested in buying from you. Nothing tells you that they're always going to be seeing your stories or what you're posting. And nothing tells you that they're always going to be focused on your business. So that is one of the mistakes that I made. Like I just, because my, it was working with my friends, I just stuck on that. And I was kind of like calculating my profits based on how much my friends will purchase you, you know so i was like mm, you know that's not really a good marketing strategy so when i started to see the numbers decreasing you know and going down I'm like okay i need to expand so how did that actually expand in that field what i did was first i analyzed my friends so i realized that okay if my friends are the people who are buying from me then i need to find a lot more people like my friends who can be my customers because i was getting a lot of great reviews from my friends i was getting a lot of positive feedback from them hi little shorty uh welcome uh thank you for joining the live I was getting positive feedback from my friends. They were buying. They didn't have any problem with the cost or anything, but it couldn't be my only customers, right? So I used the data that I had from my friends to look more, for more people like my friends. So using that test group, that you know, that natural and organic test group that I had in my friends, I was able to actually, um, you know, expand and find more people like my friends who would buy. So from that mistake, no, I wouldn't say mistake, but from that first experience where, you know, my friends were my, my cost, my primary customers, I expanded accordingly, expanded accordingly. But one of the mistakes that we are making is that because our friends are buying from us, we want to continue selling to your friends. Like you, you yourself, imagine if you have a candle business, right? Um, or let me just take the example of, um, you know, Melanie's Travel Magic. You said that you have a, like a, um, a travel service for the diaspora, right? Let's say that all your friends, I'm um, like, you know what? Uh, we want to take the first trip that you, you organize. We want to book the first trip. Fine. We are going to Senegal in West Africa. They go with you. They, they go on that trip with you, right? Then you want to have another trip at the end of the year, right? Nothing tells you that th that same group of friends is going to be interested in having the trip, much less even have the money to have the trips. So you need to look for specific people who look like your, your friends. And by look, I don't mean like physically looking, but they have the same or similar background, similar needs, similar budgets, you know, similar social status, like your friends that will also be interested in those kind of um, trips that you organize so that they can also become your customers. So that's how you kind of like use that and you expand accordingly. So first mistake that I made was using my friends as a marketing strategy, but I turned that mistake around by basically um, still using my friends for marketing. I hope that makes sense, okay? Uh, if that makes sense to you guys, just drop a yes in the chat um, or drop a yes as a comment. I'd love to know before we move on to the next second point. Uh, let me know if that makes sense, if that resonates with you. And let me see what the people are uh, feeling on YouTube and on Facebook. Gosh, Guys, if you're seeing me just turning my face around, it's because I am tuned in on this live on both YouTube and on Facebook and on Instagram. So, um, so yeah, let me know if that point number one makes sense. And then we're going to look at the second mistake that, uh, you know, I think I made when I was, when I started my business, in my first year of business, okay? Okay. All right. So second mistake that I made when I started my first business is, um, you know, not being consistent. 
And okay, today, when I was planning on what to talk about during this live, you know, something came to me in my mind. It was, I can't remember. Oh, I think I actually wrote it on my phone and I'm kind of like live streaming right now from my phone. So I can't really check it, but I'm going to put it as a caption somewhere in this live, you know, when the live is over. But essentially it was about being consistent, right? Um, so the second mistake was I wasn't being consistent enough. And I assumed that, well, because I had a great product, um, because... Because I, because I have a great product, because I, I have a great customer service and so forth, people are going to naturally um, want to purchase from me. But the reality is, if you look at even your own cost, consumer habit, right? You guys who are tuned on this live, for example, whether it's on Facebook, on Instagram, or on YouTube. Um, if you look at your app, your habit, right? You have your, fa your favorite pages that you follow on social media. And it's like, because of even how the algorithm works, unless that specific page posts a lot, then you're not going to see their content that much, right? And depending on how what you interact with um, in the social media algorithm, you're going to see more of what you interact with compared to what you don't interact with. So think of your own co consumer habits. Think of how you yourself, you, you approach the different businesses that you like and you patronize. If you don't see them a lot, if you don't hear from them a lot, then you're not going to buy from them unless that business has already established a certain uh, mental real estate or position in your mind as a leader in XYZ field. So the mistake that so small business owners make is that they, like we create our businesses, we create our business products, we create what we want to sell, but we don't sell it enough. We don't talk about it enough. We don't share the benefits enough. We don't interact with our customers enough. We don't reach out to them enough. And as a result of that, guess what? They don't hear about us enough and they're not going to buy from us or interact with us. So if you're not consistent, if you, if you don't show up consistent, you con oh, tongue twister. If you don't show up consistently, you're not going to sell consistently. Now, when I say showing up consistently, I don't mean to say that you have to be on social media every single day. You have to be there like every single hour. Like, bro, we need to um, like we need to just sometimes we need to just be on social media to go and do the actual work because you, know, you can't do it if you're always on social media. So you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is like putting together systems and strategies that will help you to be present, to be visible, to interact with your customers on a daily basis or, you know, a few times a week so that you can always be top of mind. When I talk to my uh, to, to fellow entrepreneurs and also people that I get an opportunity to discuss with, I usually tell them that, you know, if you have a storefront, right, let's say you have a store, if you're in Dominica, you have a storefront, a store at the Bayfront, or let, let me give you the, the example of the bank. Uh, the bank has branches, different different branches in different areas in Dominica. So wh when you pass through the, the, the street or the alley where you have a bank branch, you have to see it. Why? Because it's physically there. There's a physical building that makes you see it. Whether or not you want to enter, you're going to see it every single day. If it's on your way to work, you're going to see it. If it's on your way to school, you're going to see it. If it's on your way out of town, you're going to see it because it's on your way. It's a physical building. But the majority of entrepreneurs today, we have digital businesses, we have online businesses. And so it's also important for us to be seen every single place, every single place, sorry, where our ideal client is spending time. Because if they can see you consistently, they can't remember consistently, and therefore they can't buy from you consistently. So the second mistake or the second lesson rather that I learned in my first year of business is that, you know, if you are uh, like you have to be present consistently and you, you have to find or create systems and ways for you to show up constantly, to be there, to be top of mind for your ideal customers so that when they want the product that you are looking, they are looking for, they can think about you. OK, the third lesson that I learned in my first year of business is and I think that was one of the probably one of the most hurtful one is if you are not failing enough you are not doing enough <laughs> okay so that one actually hits me hard um you know because like the way i grew up and everything i always had an aversion to failure like um i I'm, i mean i grew up in an I'm, I'm african and i grew up in an african household and people in the caribbean also we are of african descent so we have a lot of similar um high francine we have a lot of similar um, backgrounds we have a lot of similar upbringings people 
um, from the Caribbean. So we know that whenever you, like when your parents raise you, specifically your mothers, when you go to school, if you get a B, she's going to ask you, why didn't you get an A? What was missing in the house for you to get an A? Did I not feed you enough? Did I not provide for you enough? If you were second in the class, they're going to ask you, the first person in the class, what, did, what are they doing differently from you that <laughs> it's making them be first and you are second? That's always the mentality. So we are always geared towards excelling, towards always being the best, towards always just being there. And as a result of that, you know, it's like we cannot accept failure. So failure is not something that is like, like when you fail, it's seen upon negatively. I don't know if, this, if you guys have also experienced that. Let me know in the chat. If that was also like that in your back in your when you were growing up, like in your family, if you always felt like, oh my God, you had to be first, you always had to pass, otherwise it was gonna be trouble in the house. But in my first year of business, I really had to learn to embrace failure. I really had like it was hard, like it's things when you put all your hard work, you put all your time into a project, into a product, into doing something, and you don't get the results, or people don't buy, or people don't sign up, or you know, you're not getting the return that you want. It's things, it hurts because you're like all that for nothing then you even you can even be a little bit resentful like that that's part of the journey you know and you kind of like have to learn how to deal with that <laughs> francine is saying it's still a learning process for me yeah definitely and even for me too like sometimes i'm like i i i, I zero back where i was and i'm like oh my god i need to get back to making the progress that i was making but yeah so if you're not feeling melanin travel magic my caribbean dad was like to push me to be first when i'm second yeah yeah uh, Caribbean parents and African parents, they don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand that. Like it's like if you, if you are second, what is the meaning of being second? Like be be first, be first. You know. Um. So yeah. So so yes. Yeah, so I so I was saying that like you know. So in my first year of business, I learned like I had to learn how to embrace it, and I had to learn how to accept. Yeah, Melanie's travel magic. She's like I had to learn to accept sixty rejections the first year. Wow. 60 rejections that's a lot like that's like girl you have you have thick skin and an elastic heart according to sia thick skin and an, an elastic heart but yeah um so yeah so welcome to those those of you guys who are joining um um and melanin imagine you say and now year three i'm reaching the 60th customer that's amazing you've had look at that you were rejected 60 times in your first year but now in your third year of business you had 60 customers i'm gonna clap for you girl that's amazing thank you so much for sharing that and thank you so much for actually being on the live and sharing that experience i'm sure that it's going to empower and encourage whoever is going to watch this replay when we are done but yeah uh, along the lines of that um i wanted to say that for me i had to learn first of all how to redefine failure right um and i had to learn that you know, like not getting the results that you want or that you work for doesn't mean that you failed. And I had to learn how to take a systematic approach to the results, to or to getting the results that I wanted. Like if, for example, I create a product and I see that it doesn't give me the result that I want, then I need to figure out what, what went wrong, what happened, you know, what can I improve? And more often than not, when I was actually when I would actually look back at you know those analytics and see you know like dissect it in a way that is an emotional that is not attached to my self-worth or my self-value when i will look into this deeper i will actually realize different areas in which i could have done better and things that i could have improved more often than not okay so um in that in the third lesson that i learned was if you are not failing enough you are not doing enough so as a business owner as an entrepreneur i feel like we need to embrace that. Like, we need to get comfortable failing. And we have to maybe call it failing forward. Like you have to get comfortable, you know, creating products that are not going to work. You're, you're going to, you have to get comfortable, maybe trying things and people don't come. Like doing events, people don't come, you know, launching your product and people don't buy. The more you do that, I mean, I'm not saying like you, you have to launch and expect people not to buy. Like that that's counterproductive. But what I'm saying is that when you put your best foot forward and you see that something did not work, right? and you see that something did not work then you you have to look at what didn't work analyze it and then try again but if you stop and be like well it didn't work i'm so sad i'm alone nobody wants to hear from me nobody wants to hear what i have to say nobody cares about my product then you know you're not going to move forward you need to take out the emotional cap put on the analytic cap and realize and figure out what went wrong 
what can I do better? What can I improve that I can learn the next time so I can get better results the next time? So for me, that was the biggest lesson that was hard to learn because, you know, I attached my results and my success to my self-worth. So I felt like if I do something, like if I create a product for my online store and it does very, very well, then I am worthy, right? And if I create a product for my online store and it doesn't do well at all, then I am not worthy. And, and I attach the success to my self-worth. That's not a mistake that we are doing as an entrepreneurs and business owners. So we have to realize that um, the mistakes that we are doing, are not they don't define who we are. They, they are merely a reflection of our processes. And if we can fix the errors in the processes, then we can definitely improve the mistakes and use them as opportunities or stepping stones. Okay. I want to share more of these, you know, in upcoming lives, upcoming lives um, series like this. I want to share more of these experiences, more of these lessons learned and more failures so that you can also see that as you're on the journey to building your business, like it's not straightforward it's not like you know it's not it's not like i'm gonna do this and it's gonna work no it's gonna sometimes you're gonna hit your your <laughs> hit your head on the ground sometimes you're gonna be like damn it's not working but you know you need to know that you're not alone on this journey i need to know that um you know it's a process and the more you do the more you learn and the more you improve okay so guys let me know uh what you thought about this live we talked about three things tonight i spoke about the three lessons that i learned in my first year of business the first one was your friends are not your marketing strategy and i die i dove deeper into that um in in the life the second one was consistency over everything okay it's not because you create something that people are going to buy or people are going to come no you have to be consistently selling consistently showing up because if they can't see you consistently they can't buy from you consistently and the third lesson that i learned was if you're not failing enough that means you are not doing enough okay now for those of you guys who are in dominica i am having an amazing conference this is the second time i'm having it the first time I was a pilot this is the second time i'm having it and it's called the master your year conference and the reason i decided to have this event as an in-person event was because again for the for, for the same thing i feel like we are not sharing enough of our failure stories that turn into success, success stories. And we are not getting real guidance from people who are actually doing this entrepreneur thing and getting the results. So the goal of this conference or this uh, this one day conference is to share real life experiences from entrepreneurs in Dominica who have actually been able to achieve different successful milestones in their um, entrepreneurship journey, even though you know, they, they, depending on like, regardless of how long they have been um, at it, I mean, at least like to some extent, but share their experiences in different fields. So we're going to have people talking about working remotely, you know, being able to work as a digital nomad. We're going to have people talking about, um, you know, being able to scale your business beyond the island. We're going to have people talking about, you know, making it in the field of tech. We're going to have people talking about marketing. We're going to have people talking about, you know, the agro industry and so forth. So it's going to be a huge, huge, huge event for me because I feel like, um, you know, it is packed with a lot of resources and value that we don't see um, in Dominica or even like by extension in the Caribbean, we don't see it a lot um, in the entrepreneurial journey, in the entrepreneurial field. OK, so we're going to have the conference. Um, it's going to be on Saturday, March 18th. It's at the Fort Young Hotel in Dominica. Now, I know some of you guys are not in Dominica based on the flags that you've been dropping. I know like Melanin Magic, you are in the UK, for example. And um, a lot of you guys that I'm, I'm seeing as you're joining the live, I know that you're not in Dominica. And you might be interested in joining, which is great. And I would love you to join. So uh, for those who are not in Dominica, we're not, we're not going to have live um, virtual tickets, but we're going to have replays of the event available. So there's going to be replays of every single session that we discuss um, during the event so that you can, um, you know, purchase the replay and still be able to learn. There was a business conference that I wanted to attend last year, October. It was in Paris, in France. And I wasn't able to attend. And I was like, damn, I so wish I could attend. But I purchased the replay and I'm like, okay, it's not the same as being in the room, but at least, you know, I'm going to be able to get the value of like all, all the information that is being shared as part of this experience. So, yeah. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know what was your, uh, for the conference, by the way, sorry guys, before I close up, um, it's called Master Your Year. And I have the link under, you know, like on, on my social media 
um, channels, wherever you are watching. So if it's on Instagram or YouTube or on Facebook, the link is there. Um, you can check it out, get your ticket. It's on March 18. It's a full one day conference. It includes, um, you know, like your meals. It includes like all the activities, like the snacks, the, the, speak, the speakers, conversations, networking. Really, really going to be amazing. So, yeah, I am happy. Um, you know, I was happy to be able to be here on this live with you. Let me know what was your biggest takeaway because I shared three lessons that um, I learned in my first year of entrepreneurship. The first one was your friends are not your marketing strategy. The second one is if you are not selling consistently or if you are not showing up consistently you can't sell consistently and the third one um was if you are not failing enough you are not doing enough so let me know right now in the chat which one do you feel like you resonate the most with or which one do you feel like hits you you know the most or the hardest you can say one two or three you know um just so i can see but for me all of them resonate with me in that first year because bro it was pretty 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 rough <laughs> But um, as I said before, we are feeling forward, okay? Always, always, always feeling forward. So thank you guys for rocking with me. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to do another live session next week, maybe Wednesday. Uh, if I am able to come on like before that, then I will. But thank you so much for tuning in and see you guys um, in the next live. Oh, somebody actually on YouTube... Um, uh, um oh no <laughs> no that's not a relevant question somebody on youtube was asking a question but i don't think that's like a relevant question yeah i don't think that was a relevant question <laughs> so yes guys uh first time using this platform i was live on youtube and on facebook um and on instagram so um hopefully we can have another live again um thank you for tuning in and see you guys next time take care bye